sturgeon in the hatchery follow uh, similar conditions to those in the river. And so we can, we can estimate that they will spawn approximately the same time as fish in the river. Um, but we also do some um, more scientific tests. And so we take samples of eggs. We basically hard boil those eggs and they're really tiny eggs. So it's uh, a pretty delicate process. We hard boil those eggs and cut them in half. And so we can look at uh, the germinal vesicle inside the egg. So it kind of looks like a little egg yolk that's, uh, that as it matures, it will um, get closer to the outside wall of the egg. And we do this every week or two, depending on maturity. And we track the progress. And when that germinal vesicle becomes within 10% of the diameter of the egg uh, to the cell wall, we know that that fish is ready to spawn. And so after uh, a fish is, is ready to spawn, we can schedule a spawning event and inject a hormone called LHRHA. It's a, a, a pituitary uh, hormone that induces spawning within 48 hours. And so we can, um, schedule with some confidence. After that's done, we look for eggs in the bottom of these tanks. And so when we see eggs in the bottom of a, of a fish tank, we know that fish is ready to spawn. We'll take that fish and put it in a stretcher and take it outside the tank. We run water over its, over its head so it can keep breathing. And when these fish are on their back, they become quite docile. And so with these fish in a stretcher, we can actually massage the eggs out of the females and collect those uh, in small containers. And these, these fish can have uh, millions of eggs. The, uh, the most that these fish would have would be about 3 million eggs. Uh, we typically see about 700,000 to a million eggs in the fish that we are spawning, but we don't take all their eggs. We just take uh, what we need for our program and then uh, release that fish back into the wild right away. And so it can continue to spawn naturally if it desires to. Uh, if it doesn't, it will reabsorb those eggs and put it into growth and future spawns. So when the males are ready to spawn, we, we get in the tank uh, with the males. We flip them upside down and we extract some milt from them uh, through their vent using a, a large syringe that has a rubber tube attached to it. And so we insert that rubber tube into the vent and we can suck out some milt. Uh, and we preserve that milt in uh, small plastic bags that are designed to hold these types of samples. And we add oxygen to those uh, so that uh, they can stay alive for up to a day in those little bags with oxygen uh, preserved in a cooler with ice. So we artificially extract their eggs and the milt from the males and females and we mix them in bowls here, which usually is done by volunteers. We have to mix the eggs and the milt in a special clay solution because sturgeon eggs are sticky. So the clay solution will help to make the eggs so they won't stick to each other so that we can put them in incubators inside the hatchery. So after spawning, we keep track of all of these different groups. They're all contained in different incubators and they're well labeled and well documented as to what families. So our, a typical spawn would consist of one female's eggs mixed with up to 12 males um, milt. And so that would create uh, 12 subfamilies of, of one maternal family. And so these are all tracked. All of this information goes into a database that is shared between uh, different organizations and monitored for years to come as these fish grow up in the river. So the, the life cycle of a white sturgeon uh, starts with an egg and it's a very small egg. It's a, a black egg that's about 3.5 millimeters in diameter. And so that egg will hatch in about uh, seven to 10 days, depending on temperature. 
But in our hatchery, we see them hatch, start hatching at seven days and finish hatching in nine days. That's uh, at 14 degrees Celsius. And after that, uh, they go to a, a, a yolk sac um, larva. And so they're just surviving off of that yolk sac for about the first uh, 10 days of their life. And they would be hiding in gravel at that time or at the hatchery here we provide a artificial substrate which uh, which they just hide in and they can put uh, all that uh, yolk sac into growing after that yolk sac is depleted they emerge from that substrate and start looking for food and so um, in in the river they would be eating little microorganisms uh, in the hatchery we have a very fine fish food it's uh, it's a fine powder that's made out of uh, fish meal and, and certain vitamins that they need to survive. And uh, after about 40 days, they become uh, uh, juvenile sturgeon. So they move from that larva stage to the juvenile stage. Uh, at that stage, they look a little bit more like a miniature adult sturgeon. And they will continue to be a juvenile sturgeon uh, until they reach uh, the adult stage. And that can take up to 40 years. So we typically see between 25 and 40 years in that juvenile stage. And when they, when they reach the adult stage, they would be about one meter long. And so uh, that adult stage is where they can start reproducing. They can start spawning. And the uh, males would spawn approximately every two to three years. And females would spawn every uh, three to five years. And they can keep repeating these cycles uh, until they're over 100 years old. One of my favorite days of the year is the sturgeon release day that uh, we have children come from uh, different schools around the area and help us release fish. This happens in the Riverside Park across the road here. And, uh, the kids uh, just love it. It's, uh, it's a neat event that the community comes together, uh, a lot of different volunteers from different groups and businesses. And I think it's important for, for these kids to, to get their hands on a fish and just help us uh, that one day of the year and uh, to see that uh, what they do matters and what uh, the different decisions that they make in our community affect the sturgeon and affect the river and the sturgeon are one piece of, uh, of, of the environment around them. But I think it's, it's an important day and um, it's, it's a joyful day. I just, uh, I can't get enough of it. I, I get excited every time. Every, every kid that comes to the release event gets to name a sturgeon and they get to release that sturgeon. And so we see all kinds of names. There's, uh, Looking through the list of names always makes me laugh. Uh, it's quite creative, uh, but it, it makes a lasting memory for these, for these kids. And uh, the, the name of the fish, uh, the name of the child is uh, also uh, connected to a pit tag number. So that fish is, uh, has a pit tag that has information on a database. And these children can go on the website look up information uh, on the uh, Nechaka White Sturgeon Recovery Initiative website and see if their fish has been caught in, uh, in different uh, years of sampling uh, since they released that fish. And that information would show if that fish grew, um, where it was caught, and uh, different information like that. I've had so many kids, and even adults too, at David Hoy, who have said to me, sturgeon release is the best day of the entire year. Even adults, even an adult who was a kid at David Hoy, went through all the years at David Hoy and came back as an adult to work there. She said that was the best day she's ever had at David Hoy. It's an amazing, amazing day. I wish everybody in the world could have a day like that.